As we told you about earlier in the newscast, tomorrow marks the debut of the new combined Times-Picayune New Orleans Advocate. Here is a first look at the front page of the Monday edition, which will be delivered to subscribers of both newspapers and will be in newsstands in the morning. It features a cover story by music writer, writer Keith Spira about the late great Dr. John. Eric Paulson talked to him about it. Keith, we have lost a couple of giants over the past few weeks here in New Orleans in the music business. Uh, first, it was Mac Rebeneck, Dr. John, and then Dave Bartholomew. You're writing a special uh, piece about Dr. John and, and some of the troubles he went through over the years. Yeah, it was by no means uh, a foregone conclusion that he was going to end up as this icon of New Orleans music. You know, the first half of his adult life was spent as an addict. I mean, he was addicted to heroin for 34 years, so he kind of existed in this netherworld of drugs and crime and craziness, even as he was getting his career going. Um, and a lot of people, I don't think, realize the extent to, to which that was the case. So in the late 90s, in 1989, is when he finally got clean, and you can kind of divide his life neatly in half from before that moment and after that moment. After he got clean in the late 89, he was on this creative tear. He did the Going Back to New Orleans record, which was probably his best record. He won his first Grammys, and he emerged as this beloved icon of the city, as he was up until the time of his death. But, you know, it was by no means guaranteed that that was going to happen based on their first half of his life. And a lot of people didn't realize this till, till he died and started reading more about him. He was a really talented studio musician before he ever became a star. Absolutely. I mean, he really was going to have a career like Dave Bartholomew or Alan Toussaint, where he was kind of a behind-the-scenes songwriter and producer and session musician. You know, that, that was, I think, his initial intent. He didn't want to be a star. He didn't want to be the guy out front. Um, but his career took that turn once he moved out to Los Angeles after serving some time for a drug bust. And the thing that was so interesting about, about uh, uh, Dr. John, Mac Rabinak, I mean, the first time I met him was back in 1978, and back then he was playing at, at uh, Rosie's down on Chapatulas, and they almost had to carry him onto the stage. And when I talked to him, the first thing he said is, Oh, Eric, my brain's all whopped out. <laughs> and that's just kind of the way he was. Yeah, I mean, that was part of his persona, but it was actual, you know, it was actually real. I mean, he, you know, he was an addict and, and, you know, he didn't make a big deal of it then or in the later years of his life. I mean, it kind of was, you know, that was then and this was now and he got beyond that. But so many musicians in that era when he was coming up in the 50s died early, faded in obscurity, including the guy that taught him guitar, uh, Walter Papoose Nelson, who was a member of Fats Domino's band and died of an overdose. So, you know, drugs were all around the scene in the 50s when Mac was coming up. He got caught up in that culture, but unlike so many other people, he was able to escape it. And that's kind of what the story centers on. And interestingly enough, the person who helped him make that transition was a woman named B.B. St. Rom Roman, who folks here may know for the last 15 years, she's been running the NOPD's homeless assistance unit, the, 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 the unit that goes around and, and helps out uh, homeless folks. But prior to that, she was with Dr. John for 10 years as his caretaker and assistant and she was the one that was there for those transition years when he made his way out of addiction in a sobriety so really she deserves a lot of the credit for helping to revive his career and getting him back on his feet well i'm glad you're writing about all that because we all love dr john and bb did a great job with him all right uh can't wait to read it thanks keith you bet and you can read Keith's story in tomorrow morning's Times-Picayune New Orleans Advocate, the first edition of that new merged newspaper.